Our scripture this morning is in two parts. They are both in the book of Matthew. We will start with the scripture in your bulletin, Matthew 5, chapter 7. And then we will move forward and read Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 through 35. I believe the pastor must have text messaged Kelvin and told him that his scripture was not long enough. So he had to add more onto it. The first one is Matthew 5, chapter, chapter 5, verse 7. And the second part will be Matthew 18, 21 through 35. Matthew chapter 5, verse 7. Yes. Blessed are, the pure, blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. And then Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 through 35, reads as follows. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but seventy times seven. 23. For this reason the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he had begun to settle them, one who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him. But since he did not have the means to repay, his Lord commanded him to be sold along with his wife and children, and that all and all that he had, and repayment to be made. So the slave fell to the ground, prostrated himself before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will repay you everything. And the Lord of that slave felt compassion, and released him, and forgave him the debt. 28. But that slave went out and found one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii, and he seized him and began to choke him, saying, Pay back what you owe me. So this fellow slave fell to the ground and began to plead with him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will repay you. But he was unwilling, and he went and threw him in prison until he should pay back what was owed. So when, this, when his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were deeply grieved and came and reported to their Lord all that had happened. Then summoning him, his Lord said to him, you wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. 33, should you not also have had mercy on your fellow slave in the same way that I had mercy on you? And his Lord, moved with anger, handed him over to the torturers until he should repay all that was owed to him. My heavenly Father will do also do the same to you if each of you does not forgive his brother from your heart. May the Lord add a blessing to the study and reading of his word. Happy Sabbath. Now y'all, that was my twin brother. Y'all can do better than that. Let's get back to We serve an awesome God. Isn't God great? You, 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 the, this message is going to be about forgiveness. Uh, somebody has been holding on to some stuff. That is preventing you from getting to where God wants you to be. You're holding on to some stuff that's preventing you from getting the promotion on your job. You're holding on to some stuff that causes friction in the family, in the household. You don't have, I don't want nobody to raise their hand. I'm just trying to tell the truth this morning. You're holding on to some stuff that happened 20 years ago that is causing friction in your family today. Amen. Look at somebody tell me, I got to let go of some stuff. This morning, we're going to talk about 
letting go of some stuff. You, the elder, Elder Cannon read uh, uh, Matthew 18 and 21 and 35. I want you to just look in your Bibles, those who have your Bibles, your pads. I want to just look again at the 31st verse, the last verse of that. Say amen when you have it. Yeah, say amen. Talk, baby. Talk, baby. The last verse. And it's talking about, but, but before we go, let me just pray that the Holy Spirit come. I, let's everybody close out his body. Let Heavenly Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, Lord, let it be acceptable in your sight. Yes. Let the words that are coming for this morning encourage somebody, strengthen somebody, uplift somebody who may be going through. This is my prayer. I pray in your holy and precious name. Let the church say amen. Amen. In the 31st verse, we often have heard this about this parable that Jesus was speaking to the disciples. But the 31st verse struck me. Because the 31st says, let me read the Bible, it says, Matthew 18 and 35, it says, So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if from your heart forgive not everyone his brothers their trespasses. That is something that we just can't, that we can't just bypass. You mean I got to forgive everybody? Did that verse leave anybody out? Uh, you mean I got to forgive the folks who abused me when I was young? You mean I got to forgive the, 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 the first husband? Hello, somebody. That, 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 that did me the way that they, you mean I got to forgive that person? This scripture says you got to forgive everybody. Now I want you to look at this servant. This servant was like many, many of you and I. Now let's just go over it real quickly. The servant uh, owed the master about ten thousand. Let's say about ten thousand dollars. We'll just put it in our today's terms. He owes about ten, and, and he goes to the master, and the master is getting ready to throw him in jail. Not only is he going to throw him in jail, but he's going to throw his wife in jail and his children. Some of us have been doing some Dave Ramsey. My, my nephew here has been teaching us how to pay the bills off. What if you owed somebody and you, they had the ability to take you to court and put you in jail, but not only put you in jail, but say your wife and your kids and your grandkids got to go with them. We do Dave Ramsey. We, we be, have the bills paid off. But, 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 but the, the servant goes and, and, and the servant, uh, he owes his debt and he's begging for him and his family's life. And, 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 and I want you guys to know, I want you guys to know that this was a terrible position to be in. It's one thing to just have to take the consequences yourself. But when other folks are dependent on you and other folks are relying on you, that's a whole different level of responsibility. And this, and, 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 and the Bible says that the master had compassion on him. He had, he seen him begging for him and his family, and, and the Holy Spirit touches the master, and the master has compassion. He says that the debt that you owe, I'm going to let that go. All right. This same service, he's walking down the street. He's left the palace, and he's walking down the street. He's excited about this, this, this thing that just got off of his back. This thing that he was going to have to go tell his wife and children, hey, hey we get ready to go to jail next week. Just prepare everybody. He got all that off of his back. And he sees someone across the street that owed him a dollar. My mind. My mind. Yeah, yeah. And what does he do? He crosses the street. Appreciate that. And, and, and like uh, my cousin Rene would say, he put hands and feet on him. <laughs> and then what the Bible said? The Bible said he, he, put, he put hands on him. And not only that, he chalked him and said, you got to pay the dollar that you owe me. Right. Somebody said, have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, have mercy Lord. He done fought the guy, beat the guy up, chalked him, and said, not only that, I'm going to put you in jail. For a dollar. 
Let me tell you something. The things that you do, somebody else is watching. The other servants was watching this whole thing go down. The other servants go to the master and he said, do you know what this guy just did? The guy owed him a dollar and the, and the master says, you know what, I just forgave him $10,000. Bring him back to me. Right? Brings him back to me and the master put all of that 10000 back on him. But this is, the, this is the part that you guys need to understand. The Bible says this is likened unto the kingdom of heaven. Uh-oh. Yeah, yeah, there's a problem here now. Yeah, this is, he said this is the way the kingdom of heaven deals with unforgiveness. If you can't forgive your brother, then, he, then God said, I can't forgive you. Somebody, somebody, somebody gonna get this this morning. You have to be able to forgive. Matthew, Matthew 5 and 7. It says, blessed are the merciful, for they shall what? They shall obtain mercy. And, and Christ is, is giving this message over and over again. You have to be merciful so that I can show mercy to you. Now we often have grace and mercy. We oftentimes put grace and mercy in the same category. They're cousins, but they're not the same. Grace is what? Unmerited. It means you didn't, you didn't earn it. You didn't deserve it. But you got it. But what's the, what is great? What is mercy then? Huh? Mercy is God withholding the punishment that you deserve. We have to be, we have to get into the position of even though we may be right and somebody may have done us wrong. There are times you're going to have to withhold the punishment that that person is supposed to have in order to get yourself together. Yeah. I just need somebody to know that forgiveness is not necessarily for the other person. Amen. The forgiveness is for you. Amen. So then, 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 so not only that, we, we have to forgive and all that, you know, that's, uh, that's understanding. But then Christ throws something else in the Beatitudes. He said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. So not only do I have to forgive, but I have to have a pure heart. Let me tell you, uh, our, our elder Hoffman, he preached, he preached one of the most powerful forgiveness sermons that I've ever heard. And I still think about it. But, but, but while he was preparing for, for his sermon, we had talked during the week. And he says, he says, Kelvin, let me tell you. He said, when you ask for forgiveness, you have to tell everything. I said, Bob, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to change religions because I can't tell it. <laughs> and and, and Bob, I don't know if it's a cultural thing or not, but I said, oh no, no, I can't tell it all. <laughs> There's some things that you just have to take to Christ. There's some things. That, you just can't tell. But I'm still here. 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 But, Bob, but, 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 but I like what Bob was saying. He said, in order to get that stuff out, you have to just release it so that the healing process can start. Many of us are still hurting today because we haven't released what have happened to us during the years. We have to release. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. How do I get this pure heart? Well, well, Christ says this. Christ says, I stand at the door and knock. He said, if you open the door, I will come in. Now, Christ wants to come in and do the cleanup. But he won't force you to release that permission for him to clean up. He's not coming in to clean up without your permission. And there are many of us who come to church week after week and, and, and year after year, but we go home the same way. We let God in, but we don't let him really in. 
We let him in the heart, but we got a special place for him. He got to stand over in the corner right. while we covered all that stuff that's still inside. All right. Yeah. He says, I want to come in. He said, not only that, I want to come in and eat with you. I want to come in and sup with you. That means he wants to come in your heart and he wants to be comfortable. But we, he can't get comfortable if every time you let him in, he got to stand at the door and can't go past the little little courtyard that you have in front. Amen. We're holding on to some stuff. Could you imagine inviting somebody over to your house? Right? And every time they come to your house, they have to stay in the front room. They ain't never seen no other part of your house because everything is closed up. Everybody is in the, in the, in the other part. They're cooking. They're having Thanksgiving. They're praising. But they have to stay at the front part. That is how we treat God. We let God in. But, that's the, but we got him sectioned off in corners where he can't come. And Christ said, I want to come in. I want to come in and heal. I want to come and deal with the bitterness. I want to come and deal with the pain. Yes. Yes. And we said, no. We need you to stay right there. God wants the opportunity to come in and clean up. And all you have to do is say, God, I'm going to release all of this stuff. Amen. I'm going to release it to you. You know, if we learn how to release the stuff that's been plaguing us, there are blessings that are waiting to just flow down in every aspect of your life. It ain't just money. Because money can't fix the problem. God got blessings of health coming down. He got, he got blessings of, of strength coming down. He got blessings of opportunities that will open doors for you. I was, at, I was at a function uh, a few weeks ago and, and the young lady, I was talking to her and she was telling me about this ordeal that she had. She, she, she said, she said uh, this lady came and this lady took her boyfriend. Right? And she said she was so upset. She says, she says I tell you, you know, I was, she said, I was Facebooking the, I was Facebooking the, the other girl, and I was telling her, I was putting her business on the street. And you, you know, y'all know I watch Facebook every day. I see some of y'all out there. I'm just letting you know. You got to be careful what you say. But, 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 but she said, I was putting it on Facebook, and I was letting the girl know if I see you, I'm going to get you. And he said, I was writing all kind of nasty things about her. She said, I, she said, she said that, that, that anger had me so wrapped up. She said that if I would have seen her on the street, I probably would have ran her over. That's what anger does. That's what bitterness does. And, 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 so, and so she's telling me the story and she says, I was in the store shopping and the young lady came into the store. She says, I got nervous. I didn't know what to do. I had my cousin with her. My cousin assured me, you gotta have some good cousins with you. <laughs> my, her cousin assured her, I got your back. If anything go wrong, I, I got you. So she, she says, she stood there for a while, trying to pretend. The lady who came in, the, came who she was having this problem with, she seen her and then she went way to the back of the store because she didn't want to be on YouTube that night in no video to folks fight in the store. You know, y'all yeah, watch it, y'all see. And so she says, I got to approach, I have to, I have to approach her. She says, I went to the back of the store and I called her name and she turned around ready for the fight. And instead of fighting, the young lady says, I am so sorry for everything that I said. Right? It, it, broke, it, it broke the tension right there. And then they start talking about how much they missed each other. And that guy wasn't no good anyway. He did the same thing. Yeah. He did the same thing that he did to you. He did the same thing to me. Yeah, yeah. And she said shortly after I did that, she said almost the next day, she said the next way I got a phone call. She 
said, I have been struggling to get some jobs. I've been struggling to do. Uh, she said, a, jo a job opportunity of the lifetime came the next day. She said, somebody with this, she didn't want to say the name, but it was a, one of the basketball wives. She said she wanted me to be part of her team. And it was what she does and it was what she loved to do. She said, I owe it all to God. She said, once I release that stuff, she said, doors just started opening up. She said, that was the only thing. She said, all kinds of things. She said, I started reconnecting with my family. I started reconnecting with friends. Because once you get used to start forgiving, it comes easy. Once you allow God to come in and teach you how to forgive, that becomes easy. And the more and more you forgive, the more God fills your heart with his glory. Amen. How many want to glorify God? Amen. Revelation uh, 3, 320, uh, I just want you to have it. It says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. I like the new living the New Living Translation a little better. It says, look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and we will share a meal together as friends. Christ wants to come in and he wants to restore you back. There are, there are brokenness. There are so much brokenness in the church and we wonder why. We come so often and have the same problems. We come so often and then still can't sleep at night. But what happens when you have a pure heart and you allow God to purify you, you can see the pastor preaching. He has his sermon together, but he don't got his life together. But you still get a blessing out of the message. Yeah. When your heart is pure, and, 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 and the praise team or the choir didn't sound good. Hello, somebody. We, I'm not talking about today. We sounded good today. I don't know what, what y'all talking about. We sounded good today. But on them bad days, y'all heard, heard some of them bad days. When the praise team or the choir doesn't sound good, the pure in heart says, I still got a blessing out of the praise. Yeah. What the pure in heart does. When you come through the door, the usher may have been occupied with dealing with stuff that she had to deal with or he had to do during the week. It didn't say hello to you, didn't greet you. You come in, you're not upset because you understand that God is in control of the sanctuary. Things when your heart is pure, the pure heart is seeking to please God. And everything that the pure heart does, it wants to connect with God. And I tell you, God wants to come in and clean that mess up. Clean that stuff that we've been harboring for years because he wants us to be free to worship. How many of you know it's very difficult to worship? The clean heart, the pure heart, is able to understand a spouse that continually gets into trouble. You know, and talk about cleaning up the uh, cleaning up the heart. I, I uh, when I was much younger, much more vibrant. You know, I was tough. I was pretty tough. And and, and I got I, 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 my wife has a you know she has a lot of stuff. She likes stuff. Pastor, she likes stuff. And and and, and so I get up this morning with everything in me. I load the truck up. I'm taking all this stuff to the dump. Now, if you want to have a fight in my house, in my little old house, take some stuff that don't belong to you. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that, that there is a fight. And I normally lose the fight. This is what y'all know. But I got this stuff, and I'm taking this stuff to the dark. Bam! I come back home. I'm feeling good about myself. I finally put my foot down. We got too much stuff. I took it to the dark. My wife noticed that there's some things missing. She didn't say nothing. But I seen the look on her face that there might be some problem in the house. She takes the truck and she goes to the dump and gets her stuff back. Now ain't nothing wrong with that. Let me just tell you this though. We oftentimes Will, when Christ takes that stuff out of us, 
we, the next day, we going to get the stuff back to put it back in. Christ takes it out, and we go and get it back in. He takes it out, and then we see somebody that done us wrong, and we bring it back. We have to learn how to take that stuff out and give it to God. Amen. Give it to God permanently so that he can do what he does. That work that he started in you, he will complete. Amen. Christ will complete it. I, 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 I'm encouraging, I'm encouraging you folks. Let me just give, let me give you this point here now. Forgiveness is not a feeling. Okay? Because it's tied up in emotion. Forgiveness is not a feeling. It's a decision. So, so you have to make a decision that you're going to forgive. I, I understand, church family, that there's some folks who have hurt us bitterly. But I promise you this, that until you let that go, it's going to stop your connection with God. He's there for you. He said, I'll never leave you. Neither will I forsake you. He's there. But he wants to have an intimate relationship with you. This stuff is holding you back from an intimate relationship with Christ. Forgiveness is a gift that you give yourself. Forgiveness is the evidence that Christ is dwelling inside of you. I want you to know there's some things that have happened to you that you can't even talk about. I understand that. But the forgiveness is the gift that you need to give to yourself. That stuff, the, the, the devil is so happy, church family, when he can have stuff inside of you that's blocking you from reaching the potential of where God wants you to be. He wants you to hold on to that stuff. He, he wants you to hold on to that bitterness. He wants you to hold on to that because that is, preve that is preventing you from going down your destiny what God has already planned for your life. You're not supposed to be working for the company. You're supposed to be owning the company. You're not supposed to just be happy in a relationship. You're supposed to be ecstatic every time you come home to see your spouse and your family. Amen. But because of what somebody else did, uh-oh, what somebody else did to us, we oftentimes hold back some of the feelings. Have I got a witness? We, we off the time a whole back. I can't give you the new, the new person in your life. I can't give you all because I'm afraid. I've already been hurt, so I'm afraid of what might happen to you if I really give you all of me. But in order to have a successful relationship, like Elder, like Elder Hawking was saying, you've got to open up and let that person in and trust that God will do what he needs to do to protect you. You can't protect yourself. Let me tell you, this is why it's so, it's, so, it's so interesting as I get ready to close. It's so interesting. Why is forgiveness so, so important? Forgiveness is so important because God passed, died on the cross so that he can do that one thing to show us how important forgiveness is. Y'all know he had to pause for a second, right? What did Christ say on the cross? I'm talking about to the folk that had these strips of cord that, that opened up his body. Flesh opened up, bleeding. The thorns that were placed on his head. The beating and the broken bones that he had to suffer. In spite of all of that, he says, forgive them. Why? For they know not what they do. That was not only for them. That was for you and I today. There ain't nobody here who have had to go through what our Christ, our Lord and Savior went through. You ain't had to go through that. Right? If Christ could go through that and forgive, then we can forgive somebody that owes us a dollar. Right? 
we can forgive somebody who's, who's done us wrong. And they may have done you wrong, but they didn't eat you, as my pastor used to say. They, they didn't cut you and they didn't eat you. Right? You can forgive because Christ forgives. And, 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 and let me tell you, that, that was so important. The reason why Christ had to set that tone and pause the crucifixion for just a second because he had to be of his father's business. He couldn't do what he had to do with anger on his mind and anger in his heart. He could not complete the task if he had not forgiven those who had done him wrong. Because Christ knew in three days he was going to rise up with all power in his hand. He knew that in three days he had the victory over death. He said, I can't, be, I can't be concerned about the petty stuff that's going on. I can't be concerned about the folk who don't like me. I can't be concerned about the folk who did me wrong. I got to be about my father's business. That's the message for you and I this morning. We've got to be about our father's business. You're holding on to that stuff. And it's blocking you from getting to where you need to be. You be you need to be like 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 the folks do after they get good. When somebody says something against you, just fluff it off. I know it's easy to say, but I'm a person. I I, I can forgive. You. I tried my best, and the reason why, and I because Lord knew I needed a whole bunch of mercy. Yeah. My my, my brother would tell you, I, I was merciful to those. When, 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 I was a, when I was a parole agent on the street and my guys would see my brother, Eddie, in San Quentin, Eddie would say to them, what you doing here? You must have did something because my brother is your parole agent. They said, yep. Morgan gave me every chance I had, okay? Yeah. They said, it wasn't Morgan. He, he gave me four or five chances. I'm supposed to be here. It, it was so, I was so merciful to some folk. That, that when it was time to get locked up, most folks had to go run and chase their parolees around. I'd call them and say, you know, it's time to lay down. It's, you come on in. They would meet me. Now, this is what protocol. I don't want nobody to do that. Guys. This is what protocol. Now, it wasn't protocol. I would meet them at the, at the jailhouse. They would turn around while I put cuffs on them, and we'd walk in together. I know why God gave me the spirit of mercy because I need more mercy than everybody here. And I want God to continue to be merciful to me as I be merciful to others. The prayer needs to be this. We need to daily ask God to Lord show mercy as, it, as I show mercy to others. Let me tell you something, boy, I, I'm closing right now, for, for real this time. I'm closing right now, I'm telling you. We, 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 in, in, in the prayer that we all learned as children growing up, the Our Father's Prayer, you have to be careful when you invoke that prayer. That prayer says, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And some, another translation says, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass. When you invoke that prayer, you're asking God to do for them what he has done. Did I get that right, Bob? You're asking God to treat you like you treat others. Did y'all understand that? That's what the prayer says. It says, forgive us our debt as we forgive those, the, the, our debtors. That means that, Lord, if I forgive, then, then, Lord, I'm expecting you to forgive me. If I don't forgive, then, Lord, I don't expect you to forgive me. And this is the prayer that God taught us to pray. And this was a daily prayer. We need to daily ask God to give us the strength to forgive. I, I challenge any and everybody here sitting who can hear me right now. I challenge you to try this out for two weeks. And, you, and, I, and I, I dare you to trust God enough to watch how many doors he's going to open in your life. Not just finances, but relationships that you thought couldn't be, couldn't be repaired. There is nothing that cannot be dealt with through the love of Christ. As I close, I got a text this morning. 
Y'all don't know the person, so don't try to guess who it was. In my text, it says, How can I forgive somebody who physically harmed me or physically did something to me and continues to do it? I said, That's a good question. I didn't text back, I just said, Thank you. Because that went a little deep for me. But the truth of the matter is, and I'm going to answer it this way. Because of what Christ did on the cross, Amen. because of how Christ gave us the example of how he forgave those that spit on him, those that mocked him, those that called him on all kind of names, those that made, made, made blood come from him, the, the, the one that got pierced in the side, that same Jesus. The reason why you can forgive, because he forgives. And we consider ourselves to be Christians. That is to be Christ-like. We forgive because it's the Christ in us. Our natural self says it don't make sense to forgive somebody to keep doing you wrong. But when you're in the spiritual, yeah, when you're in the spiritual, you have to do it. Why? Because Christ tells us, he said, I want to be able to have this relationship with you. And I need you to clear that stuff out so that I can work through you. How many want God to work through you this morning? Amen. Let's everybody stand as, as, we, as we have a closing prayer. If there's anybody, if anybody here, I'm going to have, I'm gonna have the elders come up. Because before we start this, this new year out, if there's anybody here today that you recognize that you've been harboring some pain You've been harboring some bitterness. You've been harboring some anger. Pastor Green, come on up. You've been harboring some stuff that you know has affected your life. All that I want you to do, this is not about no show. I want you to come on down and we're going to have a special prayer for you. Yeah. This, this right now is about letting go of the stuff. It, 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 this is the prayer time now. If anybody today who, who, who says, Lord, I had, I had enough of trying to fix this thing myself. Now I'm going to turn this thing over to you so that my relationships here on earth can be that much more better. Is there any more? As we pray, just touch, touch, touch and pray. We're going to give God the glory. I'm going to tell you right now, Christ is going to break that stronghold that's on your life. He's going to break that negative stronghold that's on your marriage. He's going to break that stuff that's going on in your job that's precluding you from being looked at as somebody that's potential to put in a different area. That's what Christ is going to do. Once you say, Lord, I, I, I want you to take it away, blessings will start flowing in your life. I want you guys to know, just because you're not coming down does not mean that the Holy Spirit is not working. Holy Spirit will work right where you stand. We serve an awesome God. you're doing our life, Lord. My hallelujahs. My hallelujahs belong Lord, come right now. My hallelujah. My hallelujah belong to you. Start releasing. You deserve it. You deserve it. Start releasing right now. Release it. You deserve it. Sorry. 
release it right now. You deserve. Come on. All of the glory belongs. All of the glory belongs to you. Pain, doubt. All of the glory belongs to you. He said, Lord, I need you to release it so I can live. All of the glory. All of the glory belongs to you. I know it can be painful. All of the glory. All of the glory belongs to you. Come on, you deserve it.